Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the fake, fake ass book club. Wait, can we both say it or no? <laughs> you guys, welcome back. It's the fake ass book club, you guys. My name is Moni. And my name is Kat. Hi, Kat. <laughs> Hi, Moni. <laughs> So nice to be here today. It is. It really does feel like a gift. It is. It's a beautiful day today. It's a Saturday, actually, today that we're recording. Not that it matters to you guys, but it's a beautiful day. And I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here, too. This oh, is a my fulfillment of something I've wanted to happen for so long. Oh, my gosh. And I'm nervous because I'm not that excited. And, oh, I, I mean, like about the there. book, per se. Like, I wasn't excited about the book. Um, but I'm excited to talk about it. Though. Yay! Yeah, okay, yeah. good, good, for good, sure, good, for good. Sure, for yeah, sure. I I can imagine the way I've described it because I've always like, well, we'll get it. to it, whatever, whatever. But okay, guys, well, listen, why don't you announce the book? Because as you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't have my security blanket today. Oh, I'm man. just crossing. She's my raw arms. dogging it today. Uh, I feel so <laughs> naked. <laughs> Do you want to hold mine? Just no, for it's some fine. I'm just gonna <laughs> cross my arms because it's not like I really <laughs> and hold myself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you got it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about an excerpt from Tucker Max's Hilarity Ensues. This is the almost banned, now complete Miss Vermont story. And I've read this a long, long time ago, but it just, it, the, re the truth of it resonated so much with me that I've reread it over the years and it got me interested in a lot of his other work. And so... Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's that go. and the SWV Escape um, reality show. Let's go, man. We out here. <laughs> Spoilers we for all. Listen, we have a nice cornucopia <laughs> of uh, We have diverse stuff. interests. We do. And so we're going to talk about those things, you guys. So I think before we get into it, let's dedicate the show. Hands over your heart, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Fake Ass Book Club. You guys, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Um, special shout out, shout out to our patrons, to our supporters. Thank you, guys. Um, also, I wanted to dedicate this episode to Dee Dowdy um, of Perspective Podcast. She's a soon-to-be mom. What an exciting time. Um, also, I wanted to shout this out to um, our friend, my my old friend from high school. Um, shout out to you, Dee Dee. Um, and 55 Rose Street, which is her florist business. Um, if you guys have seen any of our posts in the last couple of months, actually since probably maybe December, any flowers you've seen have been from her company. She does a fantastic job, guys. If you are in the Indianapolis area, please shout her out, please. I mean, we got Mother's Day coming up. We got graduations. We've got prom. all prom. We hit, uh, Listen, if you're Andy, you need to hit her up. So support a black business. She's amazing. The flowers are beautiful. Um, I want Kat to pop up a picture of the flowers she gave us. Yes, they're right here. I didn't bring them today because we had other stuff, but she gifted us with two really beautiful handmade bouquets of flowers for our um, 100th celebration of podcasting so thank you so much for that friend and what about you yes and that do you, and also on top of everything else she's just super dope amazing that just always that's just the cherry on top um my dedication is going out to the ancestors all of the ancestors you mentioned d dowdy i like in native american culture they refer to the children as the future ancestors Mm -hmm. So I feel like today was a celebration of that. When you go to a baby shower, there's different people of different ages there, and Very it's much. a celebration of that. And I like to think that when I'm loving myself, I honor the love and sacrifice of my ancestors because they sacrificed so much for us to get here. So it, to me, is sometimes a sign of disrespect if I don't honor that. So dedication over i like it very much and you know a shout out to her <laughs> auntie gay she was amazing she was so much fun girl we gotta hang out we're friends now yeah you don't even listen i'm you friends with some people who don't i know, know. it's like we, we, we i'm don't coming come around. for you we're like, coming around it's good, so, good time nothing, so. you know what we're gonna invite you to the space tournament listen oh, I, I have a feeling we're gonna do oh, auntie gay plays space that would be fun i would like because even duana mentioned that was in her note uh, yesterday on Instagram, she's like, I just want to play spades. Oh. I was like, same. Let's. I play with her. I want to have. Now I'm I would play with it. them. They'd be fun. I want. Let's just do a fun podcast one by ourselves first, I, just for fun. Can I we right. just do it? For I fun? will respect your boundaries. 
Thank you. You're welcome. And then we can like baby steps mm-hmm. to doing it. Yes, okay. that's fine because in that scenario, I get to play space. I see. <laughs> Everyone wins. Okay. It's a win-win. Uh, so okay. So um, are you gonna give us stats about this man or anything, or do we just? Get oh, the... I guess I could. I didn't bring anything up. I mean, about here's, him. I'm just because I listen. I, let I me just like say I while just, you're everyone looking. Knows. No, why would they? This is I what know. I need them. No, nobody knows who this <laughs> person is, unless I think this is um what we I would think call some of the whites would. So, uh, like I was getting ready to say, I feel like this would be something that we would consider mainstream. And, um, Look at yeah, him. for people, go. I saw him. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you're mainstream, you may know who this person is. I was, I've heard of him only because uh, Kat talks about him. But outside of that, I had no idea who this man was. So why don't you share with our audience who he is and what the hell was going on with him? Okay, so Tucker Max is an American author and published speaker. He chronicles his drinking and sexual encounters in the form of short stories on his website, TuckerMax.com, which he has received millions of visitors since Max launched it as the result of a bet in 2000. He also went to Duke Law School. Um, He took the bar, but he never became a, or no, he didn't take the bar. He finished law school. He, um, yeah, went to the University of Chicago because he actually got to study with uh, Bas- uh, Osama bin Laden, <gasps> Barack Obama. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he studied with uh, with Barack because um, Barack Obama was a professor at the time when he was studying there. He also now owns a company called Scribe Media where he helps people publish their books. He's now a family man. He settled down. He, well, first he got therapy, settled down, and um, now he wants life. to like help people. Which which is kind of nice. Okay, that's what's up. So tell me why this was something you needed me to see and talk about and look at because I was confused. So <laughs> we, uh, do you remember when we were on Drunken Nights and we were talking about my stint in A Promise to Keep? I do. That was hilarious. Yes, it was. Can you remind the listeners? If they so didn't for catch anyone, that? <laughs> for people who don't know, you should go over to their uh, YouTube and check that out. It's a you fantastic should. episode. Um, it's so funny because it was our first They're time hilarious. really meeting them too. They and it, are hilarious and hilarity ensued. Mm-hmm. Um, Get it? Th- we we the topic brought up when I was in high school. I was part of a chastity crew called A Promise to Keep. <laughs> uh, it's funny every time. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Woo! And that gets it was me our every job time. to spread awareness about <laughs> <laughs> keeping it pure to you mature. So one of the big <sighs> themes about this story was the Miss Vermont character. That was her platform, basically Plus. keeping it pure into you know chastity. Mm-hmm. But in real life, that shit does not work. Purity culture is hella toxic. And to me, this was a fantastic illustration of why. And when I had to re-listen to it, because I'm like, oh, let me since we're gonna talk about it, I'll re-listen to it because I haven't heard it in a while. It reminded me so much of Jeanette McCurdy's story mm-hmm. about the stage mom stuff Got about you. Katie. Uh-huh. So to me. It was because I hadn't listened to it in years, and we've discussed this before. When you go revisit right. old media, you get something new out of it. Absolutely. So that's why it was important to me because it was one of my first times hearing a quote unquote respectable white man tell the truth about a uh, bullshit ass p- purity culture. That's so funny that you're calling him a quote unquote like respectable white man because I wasn't given that. Like, that's the only reason. Like, he's someone who's been published. So, basically, he's not just a if redneck. that's the bar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But to me, the, the fact that he is offensive ties directly into the... Correlates with his honesty. Mm-hmm. Because, honestly, the way men think is pretty repulsive. So... I just appreciate the honesty instead of, like, the bullshit of, it's like, oh, no, I see... To me, it's one of the best case scenarios with which is someone just being honest with you where he's like, no, I'm not going to bullshit you. Like, I'm trying to get drunk and fuck a lot of chicks. Right. He's saying, well, OK, so where do we even start in all of this? Like, okay, why don't you so, give them a rundown of just this particular story so they kind of know where we're OK, so um, he you know, they're all short stories. This one was my favorite out of the whole book. Thank to you me, for not making me listen to all. Of I them. knew that would be a failing strategy. <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do it. Friend. It's a family <laughs> strategy. No, um, it starts out with him. Um, this is sh- uh, shortly after he's graduated from Duke Law School. He's managing his father's restaurant. All this takes place in Florida. That should let you know everything you need to know. 
I promise you. I was like, wow. Well, wow. So he's, uh, yeah, he was going to school in North Carolina, but then he moves back to Florida to manage his dad's restaurant business. Um, while he's there, he encounters a young woman named Katie Johnson, who was Miss Vermont twice. Um, he starts um, a sexual relationship with her that he finds amusing. Um, he takes her to a wedding to one of his uh, t- he takes her to one of his best friend's weddings. Uh, she causes a scene. He gets uh, mad at her um, and starts ignoring her and it causes more of a scene. Um, then later on, they kind of cool off for a while and they get back together. And over the course of the relationship, he gets to learn like why she's such a basket case. And um, we fast forward um, when he's living in Chicago you're, and trying to make it as a writer on the internet in the early days before people started blogging. And uh, he writes a story about her and publishes it on his website. And when she gets wind of it, she sues, him. she and her mother sue him and accuse him of uh, like battery and liable in the press. But the actual lawsuit claims that he doesn't have the right to say that stuff basically that he's revealing all of her secrets so it was a first amendment issue it was one of the very first uh first amendment issues in the early days of the um internet it reminded me a lot of two life crew because the thing was you wouldn't have gotten as much promotion you probably wouldn't be as famous as you were if she hadn't have sued you like no one would even know her name was attached to this because he left her name out of it Mm -hmm. originally and now he's like oh you want to destroy me now i'm i'm gonna blow this building up So uh, he ends up in the best way he could winning the case, being able to publish the story now and tell his truth without um, her coming after him. And um, that's pretty much it. And then he offers her the uh, opportunity to write her version of the story and he would publish it the same way he's published this one. Okay, yeah, so that takes us right into the story. So I don't know. So like, okay, I'm listening to this story and I mean I have lots of thoughts I mean so I don't know like I guess I'm trying to understand his platform so it seemed like it seems like his platform existed at this point anyway just to share his drunken frat boy story so yeah it was a genre he started called frat tire I I I noticed that and I thought (laughs) I hate this genre like it's not it's it's not my favorite um, but he's telling the story from um, his past self. Like you can, he's, cause I think it's him in the audio. Yeah, he's reading the audio. He's, cause you right. can tell he's forgotten about some of the stuff cause he's yeah. actually making himself laugh while he's reading it. Cause yeah. you can tell he forgot some of the stuff, like, oh especially that when he's reading her comics. Um, the, oh the captions under the comics and stuff like that. Did you that. actually see him? Mm-hmm. A long time ago, though, I didn't look him up again. But like when it was when I originally read it, because I had the physical book originally. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I guess and my initial kind of feeling when I listened to it was just like this feels like. I mean, I get that it's him, his past self, you know, recalling this story. But it's like, wow, he was a whole piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just very, you know, like I, I don't know. Like I guess it's hard because it's like stories from this particular point of view are just. Um, so I feel two ways, right? Like, so I see the humanity part of the story too, because I do think it's interesting just him exploring his experience as a man, interacting with women, and then him, like him sort of kind of navigating what he wants from women and negotiating that, I guess, you know, getting what he wants versus what they're looking for. And then there's this, I don't, it just, I don't know. It just was, there was this overwhelming grossness about it that I was just like, there's a I ick. don't like him a lot. <laughs> and I get it, you know, like that really wasn't what the story was about because I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, Kat is liking the part about how, you know, you have this. So Katie, let's talk about her real quick. So she's, um, she meets Tucker. I forget how they met. At the gym. Okay, at the gym. And he was initially uh, like attracted to her because she wasn't, like they're in South Florida. He's like, yo, this is where you go to hook up. Like when you're in the gym, <laughs> You're out here grunting. You're wearing half tops and booty shorts. Like, you're there. It's a meat market, basically. And he was like, I was attracted to her because she had, like, a hat on. Her face was covered. She was kind of covered up or whatever. And when I kind of got a glimpse of I love their first her, meeting. He was like, are you hungry? She's like, I'm always hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. And I think he even liked that because he's like, you know, bitches be out here starving themselves and shit. So, like, that was kind of refreshing. But it was just kind of like, wow. So... 
just I don't know like I maybe because it's like I've I know how she I know, like I know, like this isn't a revelation to me how like disgusting men can be. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that like I felt like I needed to read a book about how he was like, oh, I'm about to. So he grew up like in restaurants and stuff with his family. He's trying to impress her. So it's like, oh, I'm going to get all this pre-made shit and then I'm going to make it so she can be attracted to me thinking like I'm cooking and shit. It just felt like the front fest of <laughs> life that you know is out there. I'm not going to act like it doesn't exist on the other side, but it was just like, OK, here's this you know, privileged white man who went to law school, who, I mean, like, basically, you can do whatever you want, and, you know, you spend your free time, like, finessing these hoes. I mean, and it was just like, <laughs> Well, okay. what I thought was interesting, because when you read his stuff, he's never lying to women, though. Like, that was the thing, like, in no. his, like, But, thing. okay, you're not, a, you're not exactly lying, but you are performing. You're not being yourself either, though. So there's a little bit of a lie in that to I me. I guess because we only read the one story. When you read, like, his dealings with women, right. like, and he's so, very upfront. Listen, I don't know this like, man. Oh, because there's some I other ones one when they story. do the, the auction story. When well, he's let's describing, talk about just this one, because okay. I can't I talk about, about say, those. I don't he's, know. He's actually way more honest than most men are. Like, most men are going to be like, nah, baby, it's you. And no, he's just like, it ain't just you. Like, um, you know, like, he, was he telling her that? No. Like, they were never together. He was, they, they hooked up on their first night No, together. that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't remember him telling her, like, hey, baby, it's only you. She was that's what clearly, I'm saying. Like, like she, stuck. that's what I'm saying. He doesn't say that to her. Yeah, no. Like, he's no, very he clear. When that. he's like, because like I said, he's gone, he's been through a lot of women. So to me, what I found refreshing was the honesty and candor. Because what you mostly hear from men like him are just the bullshit purity stuff about like you'll find that special one and you don't need to have because one of the things I do like about him is that he's very upfront about um, not slut shaming because he's like so many times when women want to have free sex lives they're labeled as damaged and fucked up and he was like I hate that shit like mo a lot of women are like me they want to have sex with multiple people and mm. not feel shitty about it. And he was like, I hate men who make women feel shitty about that. And mm. so for him, he was just always like, hey, I like sex. I want to have sex. I'm, you know, he was very sex positive. That was, it was one of the very early, before that was even a term, he was sex positive. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I can't say that I got that from that particular <laughs> story. I'm glad you said that. Cause I'm just like, it just felt like he was making fun of her the whole time. Well, he was because Which she, she was, in, was, I mean, she wasn't bright, but it was well, like the her. Well, the part when she did in the press, cause to me, I didn't start getting pissed off at her until they sued him. The Cause you part. could, no one would have known your name had you left it alone. Mm -hmm. You inserted your name. Well, and I bet it wasn't even her. I bet it was her mom. Let's talk about it her mom. Probably <laughs> was her mom because her mom was, because to me, that was the most, going back and reading it, I, that was way more upsetting now reading it, having a daughter, having being like, you can't go to the gynecologist because you're not having sex. Let's go back, you guys. So, which y'all don't. Okay, so like the oh, whole. Oh, yeah, I haven't told the story. <laughs> yeah, like do the story because I feel like the way that they met and then just how everything transpired. Because you did say, I mean, they went to the wedding and all that stuff, but it was like, you know, she was like. A pageant girl, and yeah, because they were still in their very family. early twenties. Like yeah. that's the other thing too She's to remember. Super, they're yeah, both they're like very. They're young. both fresh out of college. And think, oh, and, and how she got kicked out of college was nuts too. Yeah, that was that was super nuts. nuts. Um, so Katie, bless her heart, and that was the thing too, because a lot of me related to Katie. Like mm. I was that girl. Like I wasn't allowed to tell my mom I was having sex. Yeah. Like, once again, like, we have the story, like, you had to take me to Planned Parenthood. That was my first gynecological exam. Because wow. it's the same thing where it's like, you don't need to have a gynecological, even though that's not true. Even if you haven't had sex, you it's still just, need to have, uh, you know, a cervical checkups, exam. Sure. It's wildly uncomfortable. Um, I feel like they could have made it better by now, but it's been the same no, since forever. They don't improve I will like say that. the last time they did heat up the speculum, and that was Under nice. the warm water. Mm-hmm. That Shout was, out to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you should find a black lady gynecologist. It's pretty great. But, um, yeah, it, it's uncomfortable, um, but it's some. It's better than cervical cancer. But what's wild is that he was the first person to say that to her. Yes, because let me which go is actually back. very caring. Let's go back. <laughs> the thing that took me out was like, so when they started, so they started having sex. They met at the gym. Um, that next, that night. They meet up for dinner and they're fucking in the... I said before the blazer, it was an explorer. 
Yes, because they had nowhere to go. That's how young they were. It was like, yo, we have nowhere to go. Yeah. We can't go to your mom's house. Yeah. And, you know, so the thing that was uh, sticking out to me was the fact that, like, when you have good sex with somebody, how that is something that sticks with you. Because a lot of the times, you know, like, I'm guessing that she probably had at least one sexual experience before this, mm -hmm. which is how she knew this one was so much better. <laughs> and, you know, and what I, I mean? love the fact that he admitted, I'm not that good. <laughs> He's like, just the other guys he's been, she's been with sucked. <laughs> and so that was kind of a, a telling uh, situation. But I think that a lot of women find themselves in that situation where it's like, okay, you get somebody who's decent at sex and you're like, all right, let's go. I love you now. <laughs> it's like, I love you now. <laughs> and we're together. My vagina definitely does. It's like she is into you. And um, yeah, so it was kind of that. Like she was kind of like digmatized basically um, because... She had never really had that. And, you know, he was performing the boyfriend stuff that you want to see in a guy. You know what I'm saying? So even though he wasn't lying to her like, hey, you're my only one, you're still. It wasn't like he was just like, here's a dirty mattress on the ground and I'm going to bust you down real quick and uh, you can he, go now. You know what I'm saying? Like he was treating women her are like people. a regular person. I like guess. he doesn't. And because he's talked about this before about how he doesn't really like because um, he was he went on a Vegas trip one time and there was a bunch of guys there who want to do a lot of coke and fuck hookers. And he was like, I don't really like that vibe because to me, part of sleeping with someone is getting to know them. Like, it's not fun if I just give you money and it's a cold exchange. Like, he actually wants, he does, it's not like he goes into everything like you're a special flower, but he's like, you're a person. <laughs> a you definitely flower. deserve health care. You know, I mean, you deserve <laughs> that D at the very <laughs> least, because I'm going to serve it. Very I mean, least. I'm glad I didn't give you the story about when a girl tried to trap him with a pregnancy. Trapped him? Trap him? Tried to trap him with a pregnancy. Oh, I can imagine. And that's the thing, too. It was like, you know, he's a law. He was a law student. Even though he didn't graduate, you can tell that he's very... A legal thinker. Yes. And so... Well, he can also do math. Like, he went to the ultrasound appointment with her, and she was like, yeah, it looks like you're about 16 weeks along. And he was like, I met you a month ago. Right. That's four <laughs> weeks. So... You were already pregnant, love. My he left in. her at the doctor's office. As like, he should. <laughs> it was... That's actually a really funny story. And because he's into Southern rap, he knew all the lyrics to that Baby Don't Look Like Me and was singing it down the hallway and high-fiving nurses. Like, it was... Yeah. That's pretty... He's yeah. a character. Okay. Yeah, he's a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a character. But you're... you're. I will agree. Like, he doesn't necessarily... To me, because... No, well, you ahead. have you have a bigger picture of it. Yes. I can only really go off of the story right, or whatever. Right, you know right. what I mean? So he just seemed like an asshole. But no, he also, his, his the other book is called Assholes Finish First. Yeah. So I'm picking up on the assholeness. <laughs> so it was like, okay. Yeah. So I didn't get all the redemption, all of the re redemptive qualities. But he was saying at the end, like, I'm not this person anymore. And so even like going back and telling the story and stuff, you know, is I mean, it's wild. I'm sure it is. I mean, I, if I go back 20, 25 years, it's like, yo, I don't. <sighs> Like, I'm not, that's the point. Like, I'm not even doing, I'm not yeah, doing you're not, that. Yeah, you're not maybe your best self at 23. No, you're just not. You know, you're still figuring it out. So I get that part too. So I was just like, okay, cool. But, um. He definitely shouldn't have brought her to the wedding. It should have been that pretty was, predictable. And he even said that too. He was like, you know, and the, and the fucked up part was like, this was a good friend of his. And he was like, yo. Dude, I know don't you. Don't bring one of your hooahs. To my special fucking event. Like, and don't she do get that. bored with her and then she starts flipping start out. Ignoring this because bitch. I've already read the story. Um, I know we this. all have. That's why you have to use nicknames for us because it's too embarrassing to have my actual name attached and I to this. I still want to be friends with you. <laughs> you know, like I actually put up with a lot to be friends with you. That's that's yeah. the vibes I'm getting. And it's like you can't even control yourself for two seconds. You still bring this whole like that was kind of my thing. And then it's like you you drag her like Bitch, you shouldn't have asked her to fucking be there. No. You dumbass. And he he basically says that at the end, like Yeah, he was mad. I mean, at I have to like, yeah, but I well, gotta redeem myself. Like I, that made me hate him. I'm like, you're not even a good friend. <laughs> Oh, you weren't. That, you know not that day. To oh, my God. Golden Boy. I think that was who was getting yeah, married. Yeah, I was like, ew. But, it, I hated it, his it, but to be fair, because I don't know if you've ever been, because it sounded like this was an all white affair. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to guess. I've been to those. Yeah. So, because he said a lot of his drama was tamped down by the all uh, other bullshit that was going on with the Duke Law crew. Yo. <laughs> These let's talk hoes. talk about that. Because let's talk about how they're all hoes. They're all hoes and they all got so fucking drunk. It was like, the girl that he brought got so drunk. It was like, 
the reception before, didn't even start before seven thirty, and she was already at seven o'clock. She was slithered. like I had to put her in the room face first because you you already couldn't take your you couldn't take your liquor, and then you're drinking, and then now you're passed and out. emotional, and now I'm and mad you're at trying you. to fuck one of my other friends. She did. Well, she gave him the worst blowjob ever. I think is how it was described. I don't know that they actually. Okay. I mean, oral sex that sex. counts. Yeah, and, so. and gave him a headshot. Of it's like six. here you go. It's like here's a You're shallow welcome. representation of my image to remember me by. It was. It's it weird. was so bizarre. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry, we didn't finish talking about Katie. Bless her heart. Basically, she grew up with an insane stage mom. Like if you listen to our episode about, I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. There were so many parallels there. It was weird. I was like, man, so this is just a type. Well, and she, the mom apparently had a lot of influence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, Read money. Yeah. And so that was like the whole legal thing. I think the reason why they took that thing. But, but once again, you could have just ignored it. It would have been like every other stupid thing on the internet we've never read before. <sighs> it was just, it was just so weird, man. Like she was... You know, you feel bad for her because it's like, you know, you have this super controlling mom. You can't be yourself. And so I would say abusive. Sure. If you're denying me health care and you're de- yeah. And, and verbally abusing dumb. her and stuff, because we were talking about like whores and sluts and stuff like that. Or even when he was like they were talking and she made a joke, like her mom said something about she wasn't eating, something about her starving. Yeah. And her mom and she was like, excited. I hope you do starve because you have, you have a pageant, pageant coming, coming up. up. And that sounded a lot like Jeanette's mom, where That's they were very just, much... you already start that shit so early where your self-worth is tied That's to your so body mass. That's so weird to me. That's so weird to me. That's so not a cultural norm um, in my family. I, I won't even say cultural norm because I don't know what other people go through, but I just, I didn't grow up with that. Like, I'd never had a lot I of critiques about did. my physical self. Not I me never... personally. I heard people around me criticizing really. their own physique so much mm. that I internalized it. It yeah. was just like, under no circumstances can I ever get fat. My mom because that she was would sweet. be the worst thing. I, I mean, don't she remember was. her. Yeah, I don't remember her ever <laughs> thinking otherwise. And is. Still now. I, <laughs> I mean, mean, like, I don't think she has any compl- She's like, I mean, I think all things considered, I'm out here. Though. I mean. It's like, sure, so, you know. So, yeah, there's nothing to really, mm, yeah, so that was really hard listening. Not hard listening to, but I took it a different way now. I don't think I've read this since I've been the mother to a daughter. Yeah, it's a me- that's what I guess too. That's the hard part because now I'm listening to it like, you know, not like she didn't do fucked up things in the story or whatever. But you know, it's just again when we hear narratives like you're gonna just relate to the person who you feel like you have the most in common with. Yeah, which was fucked up because it's like I don't have a lot in common with this hoe, but um, <laughs> not like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like I don't. Our lives aren't super similar, but sure. I can understand how it might feel to have a mom who puts you in a box and you feel like you you have to perform in this very particular way to get approval. And then, like, you you could tell, like, she wasn't able to really... She wasn't... She didn't have any sort of self-actualization. Like, she wasn't very... She didn't know who she was. Not like you know when you're 22, per se. But, but I wasn't that dim. I remember feeling that sort of fear of breaking away from parental expectations sure. and trying to find my own way, which I sure. think was a big thing of the story. Because he said at the end of the day, his dad was trying to do to him what Katie's mom was trying to do to her. That My favorite part of the book or that, that story was the, the very manifesto. end with him saying that. Yeah. Like, yeah, just being like, yo, you know, because we all have these sort of, con- these, um, not constructs, what is it? Like you know, you you get put in a yeah. Expect thank yeah. you. I would have been, we were at a baby yeah. shower, guys. I don't we, know that's why we need to play catchphrase. We would kill it in catchphrase. We, oh, we would. We um, would. I'm too tired to high five. I know I'm hot. <laughs> I'm like I'm, it is so hot, guys. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and we were pre-gaming okay, bo, bo, bo. with <laughs> snacks, okay? But no, I just guess at the end it was nice to hear that, like, he wished that for her and that he understands how, you know, I mean, like, him being the person. It's just, it's like we're always, when we're young, doing the things that we think are expected to, of us, whether it's like, I'm a young guy in this space, and so I'm supposed to do these things. I'm supposed to womanize. I'm supposed to be fucking these hoes. I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm doing all these things. And then you're getting, like... 
you know, congratulated for it. And I and that was the contrast for me that's always hard mm. to sort of like resolve because it's like on one end, he's the man, right? Because even as a young man, he can be as sexually free as he wants to. He can make fun of the girls that he's taking advantage of. He can recognize that he's taking advantage of these girls and manipulating them. He's like, yep, she's got low self-esteem. I need her um, on my team because I can slide on her. And it's like there's this unawareness that she had because she was so sheltered not only because her mom was like insanely controlling and she was like in this space, but also because just socially as a woman, as a young woman, you don't have that same sexual freedom to explore and to be out here and, and have fun without the judgment. And so it, the, I don't know, I guess because it just felt like there was a huge like imbalance. It was like, ugh, you know what and, I mean? And like, like you said, yuck. I had the like uh, back the context to know that he's very um, aware of that yeah and the fact so that he goes out of his way bad. to because he even talks about when he's talking to girls where he can tell like they're not trying to he's like he gives the subtext which is I want to sleep with you but I don't want you to make me feel like a slut and he'll be like I'm not going to make you feel like a slut I'm not he's like the, he's in like actually sluts are my favorite I mean like cool with me. you know like he's he, like I said he's sex positive like he doesn't think that he's you know, like as you're long as you're going to sleep with me I mean that's fine you're my favorite type care. of person <laughs> yeah I mean the favorite type is a willing type but. yeah but um but he did have a story where he was talking to a woman one time at a bar or whatever and she was talking about that double standard that exists mm -hmm. in our society he he i don't want to say justifies it but he gives the context of just because of biological realities men will basically like basically how there can um like for guys who are players they have to work at it like if you want a lot of women like his life was curated to this like he put a lot of effort into it. he tells a yeah. so thing about how yeah he has all these moves and all this <laughs> stuff like that he was like women don't have to do that he's mm -hmm. like there's a lot of dumb ugly sluts he's mm -hmm. like there's not a lot of dumb ugly casanovas like men have to work a lot harder at it so it's really just an admiration of the work from his point of view really? whereas yeah like for women you can it doesn't take anything to get conquests whereas for men it takes more effort I mean, I just don't. But the desire so is still slow, there. Like, like that's to me, like judging the desire for either person is misplaced. Like we shouldn't be judging people just because they like sex. Yeah, that's the part. You know what I mean? Like I just felt like I mean, you're going after her. You want to sleep with her, and then it's like there's all this judgment for who she is as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, mostly just because. I she mean, she was, was terrible. She, and not dumb. That she was. Well, to me, he Not was terrible. really trying to she figure her out because he couldn't tell if she was being dumb or playing dumb. But I mean, you were making fun of her. You didn't just ask her. You didn't. Well, because hey. no one's ever like, yeah, I've been playing dumb. Like, because she that's would true. Nobody's want saying that. But did, I'm just saying, like, like I mean, you was, knew you didn't care, though. She had no. He said that he was like, I was. He's like, yeah. I wasn't that into her, but I was a fan of her eager body. Yeah, it was he like, was like, I'm. Here. He's like, and I mean, I get that too. Because he's like, like, I'm, I'm dumb in the face. He's like, because even after the wedding, he knew he should stop kept messing with her. But he was like, but she looked really good in tennis and then skirts. You taught and would the sleep bitch with me whenever I want to want to shoot. That was super. He's dumb too. Like they're two dumb people. I was like. You taught the Even before shoot he guns. said it, I'm like, why were you teaching her that? You should and okay, nuts. so here's the thing, guys. There's a point in the book after the wedding where they fall out, and she tries to reach back out to him, and he's not up for it. So one day she leaves a what are those things called? Like a target on his car because she he had taken her target practice, you know, to shoot guns or whatever. So she took one of the little things and wrote a note on it about like you know have fun at the wedding and, da, 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 and left it on his car i mean that was ter. i mean it, vice versa that would be terrifying like Absolutely. if a man left that on your car kind of like just be like i'm armed and i'm thinking of you it's like whoa <laughs> <laughs> that's weird <laughs> I'm scared. Um, but that was yeah. the general message. Um, would you say it was entertaining or was it just too gross to be entertaining? No, I mean, it was entertaining, I guess. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm not. I ain't to me, it was, because uh, usually there's this, this sort of poshness about like all white events or something like that. And it's like, no, it's raggedy as hell. Right. Like all of this stuff is like, like. I mean, I guess if that, so, I mean, I get that part. Um and I don't know if it's because I've been able to be in lots of different spaces that are 
white. white. You know what I'm saying? Like we're in a white space today. The, yeah. They were blown away. Listen, they there were, was so much color. They couldn't understand how we they got were like, there. Uh, huh? They were nervous. They were um, like, uh, is this a private event? <laughs> they were really scared. They were really <laughs> looking around like, oh, it's a lot of black people here. It's like everything's so fine. So many. <laughs> Tim, everything's good. We're good. Um, you're safe. But no, it, yeah, like, I mean, I guess because it's like, I don't, well, also what I'll acknowledge is that you said, you're saying you listened to this a long time ago. And so maybe it's like, you know, enlightening in a way to hear these honest conversations. But I do feel like, you know, growing up with brothers, growing up around uh, having platonic male friendships, like, you know, I hear those conversations. Like, I hear how disgusting they can go. And I can also hear the human part of it, of like, you know, being in a space where you're like, you know, I'm not meeting the top tier women here. Like, these women aren't necessarily the cream of the crop. And I get that. Like, I get dealing with people where, where they are, um, too. But, so, I don't know. I just, it's it's just the dude bro of it is always just not my shit. Sure. Um, and I don't think it was a bad story. Like, I think overall, yeah. It, I mean, what would you say about his but, writing? I mean, it's so hard for me not to be biased about it. I sure. think because I'm just like, I don't like him. Because of the subject matter. Because yeah, like, he's actually a fantastic writer. Maybe like, I need to. Really... Well, and I did see that he uh, ghost wrote Black Unicorn with Tiffany Haddish. He did. Um, so I don't doubt that he's so a he's decent reader. So he's read his work. Yeah. A writer. What did I say? Reader. Oh, God. See? <laughs> but he's water. probably a good reader, too. I need some milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wah, wah. Yeah, but he, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's a great, but maybe I just need to take in more again, because you guys, like, to be fair, like, it was one short story. The story wasn't, it was like an hour and 10 minutes yeah. of his story. I think story, it had the so. virtue of the truth. Yeah. Like, I really hated. I'll give him that. It was very truthful and stuff like that, but it's. Um, and to me, it was a truth yeah, I great. rarely hear from white men. Like, oh, most okay. white men, we've, we've read a couple of white men. Most of them are not very honest about their sexual exploits. Let me think about who are we speaking of? Because we read, um, Sid I always want to call him, I always say the wrong one. I always want to call him Sudeikis. That's not his last name. Nope. Mm -hmm. The Christmas one. The icicles. Something on ice. <laughs> Holidays. <laughs> <Lightning> on ice. <laughs> Holidays on ice by David Sedaris. <laughs> Who is also a southern well, white man, but yeah. a gay one. But he wasn't talking about necessarily sex. You know, he had the one story well, about the guy he had a crush on or something. Yeah, like, and like I said, some of his other work covers that more. He doesn't get into the details as much. As Maybe, you know what it is? I am a prude. I think that's really what it comes <laughs> down to. You guys, full disclosure. Like a lot of the time, you know you what I mean? I think squeamish. It's, it's like, like, oh my God. <laughs> Grody. Uh, yeah, like I think maybe it's some of that. And then. Oh, you would hate the Cancun stories. The can Cancun stories are raw. I can only imagine how well, the Cancun But you know what? I liked how honest he was then too because he was around for, I don't know if you remember, like this would have been a long time ago, like maybe 90s or early 2000s, where. Uh, some kids on spring break died bungee jumping. Oh, shit. Um, and fell off like a ledge in one of those hotel rooms and stuff like that. He was like, people forget about the American safety net. Like, that shit isn't in Mexico. Like, they will let you kill yourselves. Oh, easy. They yeah. Don't give a damn. And so they hope that, you do. Because that's what he got a job doing while he was in Duke Law School. He spent like a couple of months in Cancun while he was in law I school. Saw that. <laughs> while he was, uh, and all he, and that's basically what he was, just a liaison I, to keep the frat kids from killing themselves. I actually res see I like him more now. <laughs> I remember the first time we went I was like how can I get back here quickly like this is fucking amazing it's beautiful there the beaches are nice people are nice like mm -hmm. it's cheap like I get it I was like yo no for real like how can I like and, and come back here And eventually he was like Cancun one. <laughs> I, it has my heart it has my life. Um, he was like Cancun one. So yes the Cancun stories to me that kind of endeared me too because yeah, like of course they back. were very different from my Cancun oh, stories. Ours were never that juicy um, friends. I mean, yeah his mm -mm. were wild so um, ours was a uh, cat was trying I, to get me to play uh we, it was like let's go play volleyball or you or know no, I wanted to do the pool aerobics like they did pool aerobics in the I morning no. and then they did volleyball yeah mm -mm, no you were like have fun I, I won lazy <laughs> you bingo encouraging. though you guys I won lazy <laughs> bingo I have I still have it it's a blue um it's really beautifully painted ceramic um it's a piggy bank oh. and I didn't have to do nothing 
Bravo. I didn't have to sweat. No. <laughs> or try. No, I was um I I was having really fun. Like, but I was I was enjoying you having fun. I thank saw you, you over there. That yes. was great. It's like, no, I'm gonna pass out on this lunch here. Like, I'm drunk. Good job. And just come back and <laughs> bring me go. some water in a little while. <laughs> just sprinkle some water in my face. It was pretty great. Um no, he's a he's definitely a mixed bag. Um, to me, that's what always just stood out I mean, about that's, him. I mean, that's we all are. I don't, you know, and I do think it's maybe kind of unfair to judge him. And when you understand his that, parents, I'm just like, like he gets into all because that's the me to me the the reason why because oh, a lot of people reach out to him to ghostwrite books because he's a very sought after writer, mm -hmm. but he only agreed to do Tiffany's book because she was honest. Mm -hmm. He was like, so many people want to. I want to. I want a curated story that doesn't shine me in the light. Mm -hmm. She was like, nope, um, I did I did all that shit. Like, yeah. it's, it's grimy where I'm from. That's what's up. I mean, I can appreciate that. And so that. for him, I, that's what I've always appreciated, the fact that he includes his dirt. Like, it's just yeah. not like, I went to law school and I'm a respectable white man and you need to get yourselves together with all your... It's like, no. He's like, no. Nah. I think people... I think a lot of people, when they're writing... Um, you know, a bio, an autobiographical book, they're not necessarily starting with that. Like, I think it can lead up to that sometimes. But, <laughs> but it's that was like, mostly what he was doing. Yeah, it, that's all that he was doing. Like, his whole blog, like, that's how his writing career, What he was known for that. Like, it was very, um, it was very salacious. I mean, like, all his stuff was just like, hey, I'm putting, I'm, and I mean, that's what's up. I mean, some people feel comfortable with that, but, like, I don't expect every person to be comfortable putting... God, there, no. you know what I'm no, saying? Like, it's like just because I write a memoir doesn't mean I want to talk about, you know, the fact that you know what I'm saying. We're like when if Tiffany I lost, had a yeah. series, I feel like one of the tougher stories was when she was talking about when she was sleeping with a disabled guy and didn't want to take it public. You remember that? Yeah. And that's something kind of. It's like you maybe know, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, she can because she seems like she would, but it's like you know Michelle Obama didn't talk about. Her first sexual experience. I didn't she expect did that from bit. her. It was subtext when she was right, talking about but the she dude. didn't. She it was, was like a joint so within then, the car, and then, and then we had sex. He went down on me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just saying, like not every story is gonna have well, it's that. Like, and so and uh, it's okay. To me, he reminds me of Chelsea Handler. Like okay. it's a, except she's from New Jersey. It's very much the opposite of chick lit. Like mm -hmm. what you were saying about Fred. Like it's very much that. Like, it's the genre. other side of it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it does give insights for someone like me who doesn't have brothers to see yeah. how not all men, but a not insignificant amount of men think. Yeah. Like, and I wonder why... if this resonates with black men or men from he, other cultures. So here's the thing. He's from Kentucky. So in like a lot of his stories, he does link up with kind of a lot of Southern black men. Mm -hmm. It seemed to gravitate towards him because he gets girls. Like, cause that's the thing. Like his thing is like, look, I'm gonna, I'm about to get these hoes. So yeah, like it, wherever I'm going, or the hoes are going. They're coming so, with me. I'm trying. So athletes are like, that sounds great. Let's so he actually this. has some stories about um, some times he's had with black athletes. Those mm. are in some of his stories. I mean, you just look so pleased. I can't even. I don't know. Well, why. it's just because I'm like, finally, some truth. I feel like I'm lied to so much mm. that truth feels very refreshing. Okay. So even when he's giving the stories about his friends, cause not all of his friends act like him. He was kind of the worst of the worst <laughs> uh, because there's this one story with his friend hate he was in the story he crashed the van because uh, there was like he looks like he can drive he looks yeah and, like, nah. but hey it's so crazy because his name is hate but he was actually the nicest of mm -hmm. the duke law crew and he described hate being the way he would have these fits of rage is because he kept everything suppressed all the time mm -hmm. and he was always the perfect gentleman he never you know whatever whatever but then every once in a while if something slightly wrong happened he would just explode and then tucker's an asshole so he would just laugh at him it's hilarious, yeah. yes and so i don't know to me it was um i just love the, the truth. truth okay i just love the truth the truth is fun. It is. And you should you should know it. And that's the thing, too. So if you don't want to mess with dudes like this, these are the signs. Yeah. So I think <laughs> people who would like this book, it's like if you're unsure <laughs> about the kind of men you should be approaching or letting approach you or just even having some background on like just some of the game that might be. I don't this this book is probably for not people who already kind of have some experience with people. Like, I think if you're younger and you don't have experience or you I mean like I this doesn't feel like it feels intuitive to me in a way 
Um, but this was in an era before social media, too. Yeah, so maybe that's it. To me, the timing of it, it kind of lives in a For special sure. space, kind of like The Office. Like, it was really one of the last sitcoms before social media. Oh. If you think about it, like, it was one of the really big um, sitcoms. And so it it works as a time capsule in a way. And so for me, the... um, for one, it's interesting to learn about U.S. law. I also really he enjoy how honest he is about racism. He's also one of the uh, few white men, like David Sedaris, who admits racism is a problem in our country. Oh, so, what is he doing to change it? Um, just Does informing people. It? No, he lives like on a ranch. He's like, y'all hoes are He's like, own. I'm going to shoot you how, I, I'm going to teach you how to shoot. <laughs> He's like, I'm out bison. here being on a self-sustaining ranch with my kids and my wife and y'all hoes can do what you want. And that's just, I guess too, it was just like, so you were talking about his family. You're like, you don't really know his background. I don't. Um, I do remember there was a point where he was really wanting to be a, a writer and trying to come up under the shadow sort of of his dad, expecting him to be this lawyer because that's what his dad wanted for him. And um, he got into tr- that legal trouble with uh, Katie or whatever. And he hired, when he said John Kerry, was he talking about the? Mm-mm. Okay, so there was a lawyer named John Kerry who I guess was supposed to be a really great lawyer. And yeah, he was first like, amendment attorney. Yeah, and he was like, I can't afford it. It's like $7,000. So he's like, fuck it, I'm asking my dad. His dad was like, I'll give you the seven grand if you go back to school and finish and do all the things. Well, he finished school. It was just take the bar. Whatever it was. He was like, I'll give you this money if you do this. Because he was like, he was like, when he saw the $7,000 bill, he was like, let me check my my bank account. He said, I got $44. $44. <laughs> I ain't got it, homie. So, um, you know, of course, he his dad pays for it, He does it. And then he's like, you know, I just couldn't do it. And, do you it. know, I told my dad, I'm just going to. And I was just thinking, wow, <laughs> holy privilege, Batman. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot of it was just like, ugh, ugh. like, <laughs> it's just, I mean, good for you. So it's just hard. I just be like, ah, oh, I just, these stories are, don't. Um, it's not his fault. Like, that's the other part. It's not his fault. Like, you grew up how you grew up. That's your background. But I just thought, wow, there's so many people. Because he went to boarding school. Who, that's how you know. That's how you know. Your but you can tell he's really you. smart. That's the other yeah. thing to me that I enjoy about his writing. It's really smart. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a dumb man at all. No. no. I'll give him, I mean, this is why he's he can manipulate women because he's observant and he's paying attention. Details, details, details. My I don't thing like, is get like that about Is him. it manipulating if you sleep with someone who wants to sleep with you? That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, like, you learn people. It is, it's like the art of seduction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think he's necessarily... Well, because this depends on what manipulate means. I don't think he's trying to trick women into sleeping with him. Mm. Like, I think he's pretty... I think Katie Everybody's wanted- tricking everybody. Like, we're all pres- like we're all doing things to be more attractive sure. or whatever. And it's like, if you are more observant and you get it and you, you peep game, I mean, that's not necessarily implication on him. Because he's doing I'm just the work saying. of being attractive. Like, a lot of men don't do that. Yeah, he's at least... But again, like, it's like, for me, it's just like, wow, the bar's low. Like, he's it trying. Is. But th- that's what he tells men. Like, Ugh, if you it's get ridiculous. better than the baseline, because... He has a, he, after he did all of this stuff, he did a podcast um, with a behaviorist doctor or whatever called The Mating Grounds, where he was trying to help young men kind of counteract the game culture, like that whole sort of uh, pickup culture, pickup artist culture. He was like, that shit's toxic. And he was like, I mean, I used to do it and it works, but. It's well, toxic. no, he never did that. Like his whole thing was like the pickup artist stuff is when you go up to a girl and you're like, hey, you're almost as hot as your friend. Like, that's kind of like you you do veiled insults and try to like pick at a girl's self esteem to, you know, fuck, girl, like, he's like, my best no. option. He'll just be like, hey, I'm, what are you trying to do? Because he knew everything was a numbers game. So he would be like, straight up, it's like, are you trying to get out of here? Or like, he would talk him up and then be like, hey, are you trying to get out of here? Like, he was never like, he was, he was actually very anti that. Like, if you listen to his stuff. Other stuff, yeah. Yeah, he's just, but he does want to fuck a lot of girls. He's just really clear I mean, about doesn't? that. <laughs> That's the thing. He was like, <laughs> the first thing to success, he said, was being honest about what you want. Mm-hmm. And so he had to be honest about what he wanted. And he was like, I want to get drunk and fuck a lot of girls. Mm-hmm. And that's not very flattering, but it's what I want to do. So, 
But a lot of the people he was around would lie to themselves about that. Mm-hmm. They would have girlfriends and fuck around. They would, because that was the, that part. Yeah, like mm-hmm. he would. He was like, "No, I'm being honest. Like I ain't trying to be with like, you." Fuck the respectability <laughs> politics of this whole thing. Yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to do that. what I'm trying to do, and the fact and that he farther. revels in his privilege. Like I can do this because I'm. Uh, I feel like Paul Mooney used to say that he was like, "Whenever I'm going to, th- I'm rich, white, and 25." Like I, and that and it was just like boom, boom. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, rich white twenty five. This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just like wow. It's, like, it is. You men know what I mean? Dis- but it's I've not said it fault. before. Men are disgusting sex monsters. I mean, I'm not even. That's even. That is. It's. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, they can be, and often are if they're talking to. <laughs> A lot of the not disgusting ones aren't really approaching you for real, for real. Like a I lot know, of and times, they're upset about it. Yeah, and they they feel a way. They're like you, but you don't even like me. You want me to be this disgust. So what is it about women that they you that they comp- want that? We've talked about this. it. Has to be confidence. Talk he about gets it. so much because he's confident. Like it wasn't because he always said, out of my friends, I'm not the most attractive. I'm not. I'm not the smartest. I'm he, Ding. D- I'm not the tallest. He Ding. was like, but I'm coming in. And like, I, but I, God I, damn it, people. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> he, every time he was always hyping himself up, he was like, I'm mm-hmm. Tucker Max. I'm awesome. You would be lucky to fuck. And one of the chicks got, I fuck Tucker Max, like tattooed Yuck. on her pelvis. Right. So, you know, everybody just needs to do better. That's <laughs> kind of like where I was. That's what you said it was story. like so easy. Do better. Everyone needs to do better. This is terrible. So yeah, um, for if, for me going into it, I always find I don't know. <laughs> I find this such an empowering story about breaking free of societal. Because um, we did that. Who broke free though? Oh, uh, the white man writing the story. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And like, I hope eventually cool, Katie, the white man broke and free. And I hope eventually Great for Katie him. Johnson. I don't know what she's doing right. now. Hopefully but Katie. Hopefully. Though. And um, Jeanette McCurdy. She, she was wasn't in this story. She wasn't. I but said, she was in my heart. Like, she is very Did much the that? tiny blonde girl who was able to get... Well, her mom had to die. But you... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a lot of girls in her situation collapse under that. She probably still is, is my point. Well, she said she's still struggling with the eating disorder, right? Well, and, not even her, but just Katie. Oh, like Katie sure. is still probably front not? front fest America, America, because Fuck it's like we yeah. don't, yeah, like there's no space for her to do that. Like Tucker Life Max is better when you live by the letter, left and fucking right, because he has the space. But that's to do the that. thing; no one can ever come after him because what. What ended up ending the court case was that his lawyer filed for expedited discovery. Yeah, that was that was that was a money good. move mm-hmm. because it meant they had to be deposed. So you would have to because here's the so other tell thing. Tell me all the details. Here's again. another thing that men complain about all the time, which is which doesn't happen very often, but they would like they think it just happens all the time where What's a woman that? accuses you of some like battery, sexual battery or physical uh, like domestic abuse when you didn't do it. Okay. Not to say that that never happens okay, because it happens. happens in this story, but generally that's not what happens in real life. Um, but Kate, and once again, it wasn't really even Katie, it was her mom who, cause what he was uh, brought up on three counts and one of them was domestic battery and basically trying to say he hit her, but all he was hitting was, uh, it, yeah, it, okay. and so <laughs> and over she wanted to and t- over again. But okay. when he talked about too about how schizophrenic she'd be about sex, because one minute she'd want it all the time, and then another minute she'd be like, no, I can't. And it's I've all been, the shame that's downloaded I've been into with your dudes brain like that. Ew. Yes. Like where it's been like you can't get enough one moment and then it's like, no, I'm too guilty and pure. So it's like, but no, you're not. But no, you're not. It's like, but what's that? (laughs) What's this right here? What's this? (laughs) Right. So to me, it's that sort of um, and and, and talk about Florida where there's somewhere where it's very anti sex education. It's very, it's very anti everything. So I was like, it's very apropos that this is happening in Florida, where we want to pretend like the girls are all virginal saints, and all the boys are just these bad boys who just want to have sex with them. And it's like, no, these were two willing participants who are fucking in the back of an explorer. Right. I mean, and what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> and if, well, I think I, I quote this a lot, and it's like, if I can't, get, well, this is Tucker Max saying this, but if I can't get drunk and fuck hot chicks, then what is the point of America? Like, 
<laughs> Put the flag up. I mean, what is the point? And you know? it's just an erect penis. <laughs> In the dun, form dun, of. Because <laughs> <dun, dun, dun. laughs> if you look at like a lot of state houses, they look like the head of a penis. Very phallic. Like the Capitol Very buildings. Phallic. It's it's not Penises even it's not even subtle. It's not subtle, no. And they stole that from the Egyptians. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, everyone, <sighs> I guess, likes a hard one. My God. I don't know. I'm sweating. I, it's so this, warm and we need a break. I do. I need some water. You guys, I'm thirsty just like these hoes. Um, we'll be right back. And we're back. You guys, it was a fantastic break. That was a really good break, it though. Was. For real, for real. It was. It's um, It's breezy. Man, I, I just, you know, friend, I didn't, I was didn't trying not to it. hate his, I was trying not to hate his gut. So you didn't hate it as much as I hated milk in my coffee? I don't hate anything as much as that, actually. No one will ever hate anything yeah. as much as I hate milk I mean, in my coffee. You, because to me, I just, sometimes it's like, it, this feels ridiculous for me to be this upset about it. I mean, like, this is this man's life, This is these were his experiences, and... Your feelings are validated, you But it's him. just like... Yeah, like, I just guess the place that I'm in right now, his story just wasn't, it was just like, okay, all right. <laughs> you just reaffirmed like everything. Nigga. Like, I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm trying to cultivate a space of love and respect for men. And it's like, he didn't really help you guys' case that much. Um, but luckily, I have a lot of really beautiful, fantastic men who probably maybe they were whole pieces of shit back in the day, too. I'm sure we all... You know what I mean? Like, that is that is the thing. There, It's an evolution, so I can appreciate it from the standpoint of, like, um, just evolving past your worst self. I mean, that goes for myself and everybody else. Like, we all have that. Because I'm like you, this isn't a life I would ever want to live. No, and it just makes me sad, you know, like, that on the basic level, like, if you... You know, like his point is correct. Maybe I, I mean, I, maybe I'm just mad at the truth. Maybe that is it. You know. Oh, we say that the truth of human nature is really disturbing the truth to me. Will so set like, you free, but to, first it'll piss you off. Boom. So like, that's where I'm at. I'm still at the pissed <laughs> off pissed point. Off. Yeah, I'm like, this is some bullshit. It's like, why are you gross? It's like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, why, we're not better than this. Like, I do think that human human nature. I mean, even and again, I'm not like subtracting I don't think myself from it. Every man is it. like him, to be sure. Yeah, no. Like we people are like that though. That's the other are. part. Like we. We are all in, innately sort of like after our own, we're self-interest, you know, our own self-interest, which is is a human thing. And it's not always awesome, but it, it's part of our, our experience. So um. a lot of the men who have the background he has are a lot worse because mm. to me, I, to me, it's so rare to hear a white person call out racism. To me, that just floors me. Yeah. Like every time, I mean, just, I don't know, but then it's like you get to be so fantastic. It's almost like, oh, when a white person raps real good, it's like, I mean, but there's people who, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I, yeah, like I'm not trying to get yeah, Max Lamar wasn't that amazing ba badge of honor because you're telling the truth. So, like, I guess that's where I'm at. It's I'm just fine. not like, yeah, it's fine to me. It's, it's like, fine. good, I'm glad this you're telling fine. the truth. It's but just fine, sir. I'm not jacking your dick like everybody else right now, okay? I'm not giving you extra <laughs> to be flowers. Fair, for I'm that. not dick riding, it feels just, like it a little bit, <laughs> guys. If I have to say, it feels I like a little bit of a writing, feels like a little bit of a but good writing. I'm a sucker for good writing. So any anytime it's like, ooh, I'm like, this is this is coherence. This is some good writing. This is okay. very good writing. And um and like I said, he did Tiffany Haddish's. So we technically have I read did, him like, before. Her book. It was good. Her book was good. Yeah, her story was fun. That was really well written, very cohesive. So yeah. But oh. I thought too, do black do not black people do people who don't have our like I'm pretty sure like for some people listening to this, you know, like if this isn't your like they are like, oh my God. Yeah. Racist. Yeah. Like, so I get it. I get it. I get it. I, You're worried I about being it. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how many times do you have to say My it? God, we uh, know. Uh, have you ever tried not thinking about it? <laughs> so there's that part. So I mean, I'm I'm aware of that. So I know. Yeah. I mean, Tugger, you know, it's cool. I mean, you are who you are. And... I've actually thought about reaching out to his me his company, Scribe Media, because Ooh. they help you write books. He's really passionate about getting information, like niche book writing. So um, he helped a woman who was like a surgeon write a book. And it was really, really interesting to other surgeons. But he helped you, you to need. actually write and publish and market a book. What would your book be about? 
The nerd who knew too much? The nerd Ding. who knew too much. That is it hilarious. would probably be about how to survive white supremacist in academia. You're surviving it? I did survive it. Look at me. <laughs> Not look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Survive. I'm alive. Wow. So. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five. I'm alive. I'm a <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm zero. Or um, maybe on okay. um, hair. Yeah. That would be great. Like that would be something All I right. would. Now, but I, it's not like I just don't have enough to do. So maybe I'll write a book. Listen, if he helps you get your book together, I will. Well, not him like personally, him. but his company. Whoever, sure, his yeah, affiliates. Yeah, like it's, but it's it's very cool because I actually did reach out before and started it and just didn't finish. Like, dear Tucker. Yes. <laughs> it was, it was just scribe media. So yeah, if you have a book idea, like reach out. They really do want to help get ideas out there that aren't generally picked up in mainstream media. Okay, I can see that. All right, well, sure. And I they understand you. what racism is. Okay, that's good. To me, that's very important. You with should start with, with that now. then. It's like, so since you guys know what racism is, this is me typing. You can't see my hands. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna insert <laughs> typing. <laughs> Dear Tucker Max and family and friends. <laughs> okay. Help. <laughs> if you're listening, help. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so if you had to rate the book, I mean, I can't rate the book though, technically. I didn't read the whole thing. I can well, read the, the story. story. Yeah, you can read the story. I'm going to give it a. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Three out of five. A three out of five. Um. Ooh, what should I give it? That's so quiet. I know. <laughs> I was trying to think of something clever, but it's. I not can't think of anything. Enough. great. It's gonna be stars. Mar Super Mario stars. I want to see the new okay. Super Mario movie. My kids saw it this weekend with their. Did they love mama. it? Uh, well, I haven't talked to them, but I can imagine so. They saw it in 3D. Because they're fancy. I, can I talk about how much I love Super Mario? Like that is some of my most cherished childhood memories is playing Super Mario by I myself know. with my bros. I oh. used to play that with them. It's only child. So. I watched them more than I played it, but it was that was one of the ones though. That I never cool. had to hand over the controller. That's true. Man. So it's pretty sad. Lots of sharing. But yeah, I want to see that movie. So I'm gonna give it a five out of five uh golden Mario five. stars. Yes. Like this is I, I said it before, this is one of my favorite pieces of literature. Oh my god. <laughs> I cannot. I just, I honestly was, that surprises <laughs> me. me. I'm like, how was, is this you know, one of your favorites? It reminds me of like a white Tyler Paylor. You, you don't it, like Tyler Perry though. It That's reminds me of a white Tyler Perry movie. It's funny when it's white. Like I can only, it's like watching somebody, Talladega I'm a, Nights. I'm like raising my hand real slow. If anybody listening is is confused, please like reach out to me and let me know. I like, liked am I one Tyler Perry movie. Um, how, why did I get married? Oh, I actually did like that, that one. That one wasn't bad. Uh, I liked the Scott. sequel even better. Yeah. Uh, Those it terrible. was, I think it was Medea's Big Happy Family. I didn't see that one. one. with Bow Wow and I think Tiana Taylor. She's like, bad. bye, Brent. His baby mama. You don't remember that? No, that I one was actually kind of funny to me because there was this one line because, of course, Tyler <laughs> Perry was playing that crazy uncle and he got high and he was uh, talking to like Tyler Perry <laughs> without makeup. And he was like, I'm so high right now. You look like your real daddy. <gasps> <laughs> not the truth coming out so there was, that was actually kind of entertaining that is what i will say there's always like little pieces of it that's funny but it just be like it we want to we want to see it be well we could that's a whole nother show yeah re-listening to it it reaffirms my liking of it so but... that's what i i think maybe that's what i don't like because it's like when black people do it it's like mm, shmeh, you know what i mean and then it's like when a white man does it it's like oh my gosh this is fucking <laughs> this is the best shit ever so i was like eh. i guess it's funny we're laughing at shmeh. the buffoonery of it all because i guess that's what i don't like about a lot of tyra Perry stuff is it's a little too slapstick and well because again the social implications of it is just different like we don't get the space to do that without feeling yeah. like i have to prove myself to the world yeah. it's like not all of us are like that <laughs> you know it's like so, some of us are serious but he can just do that because he again yeah it's his whiteness privilege. is the baseline yeah so that's yeah, what he doesn't have to worry about that but so, i mean I that's the thing but also the privilege isn't his fault i revel in a lot of my privilege. that part i mean i'm not blaming him for that part so i do want to be yeah i want to make sure i'm putting to, it because at least he acknowledges it I like know. to me it's way that's, more interest it's way more irritating when they're like i don't no, have any privilege no. i'm just kentucky fried Mool. awesome Mool. it's like nah you ain't that sweet it's like actually <laughs> here's all the reason why you said um okay so you know agree to disagree there's some contrast for you guys yes. for once we didn't both love it mm -mm. um I'm so giving now you have to pick something i hate i'm giving it three uh 
I'm gonna give it three white thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> to you, Tucker Max. Okay. All right. Take that. <laughs> Take that. Mm. <laughs> On that note, we probably should fucking spin the wheel, friend. Bull. Spin it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. This Bacon. is what we need. This is what we need. We need a break, guys. Um, there was a bomb threat this week. Um, like, our lives have been really complicated. It has been. And um, there are some books that we're working on. Don't know if we'll get done with them. But I want to leave this open for a fakester because you... So, I've watched one episode of... What is even this show called? I've just been calling it SWV Escape, the reality show. Why are you saying SWV first? How do you know it's not Escape SWV? Uh, alphabetical order. Okay. Wait. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Let's think about it. <laughs> A, yes. B, C, That's great. D, e, B. Okay, yes. Yeah. Those are really no, far away, they, actually. That should have been chronologically, simpler. SWV came first. I like it. I mean, I, I respect it. I would have said them first as well. But anyway, I watched one episode of that because who was talking about it? I think I was listening to... Amanda Seals's podcast and she I've had Candy on there. Shout and I was out to like Candy. Black uh, All Star. Amanda Seals, love you. Um yeah, I definitely wanted to I was like, let me just get into this mess real quick so I can see what's going on. I have literally not watched um reality TV in so long. Me neither, because I don't have cable anymore. So the stuff I used to watch mm. came on VH1. And I don't have VH1 anymore. Uh, but I do have Peacock. Mm -hmm. so, Peacock, yeah. baby. I'm pretty sure um uh, in your I guess somebody, somebody. But anyway, I'm if you need it, call me. No, but don't, um, do don't call her. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes and the last one. I don't plan on watching the in between ones. It's like I got everything. <laughs> I I got it. I'm There's a lot to up. talk about. I'm gonna try to catch. And I up. do kind of miss the messiness. Like it's weird. I don't really like gossiping about people I know, but I love celebrity gossip. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I guess it is kind of fun. So I'm I'm going <laughs> to jump into, I'm going to try to watch more of it so maybe we can talk about that. There's some other stuff too. You guys, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a good about. time. We never been, run out of listen, stuff. We spent pretty much the whole day together. We could probably still talk some more after this. Like oh, when we turn the mics to. off, the camera, the the camera's about to die. It is. Um, it it's doesn't tired matter. Of us. Like if I, if I had to, <laughs> like if I call you on the way home, like, we would mess around, like, for real, for real. Like, we would just talk. It's true. The whole time. Sometimes I just have to make myself stop, like, now. I know. I'm going to be like, you guys, how y'all still got stuff to talk about? You're always talking. I've been talking. And you I'm going to come be... home, and I'm going to talk to you. Some more. Okay? And you're going to sit there and pretend First, like you First, I'm like going to talk some more. And then what? Then, then I'm going to talk some, some more. And, and then, then what? what? Then okay? I'm gonna, Whatever I want. Some, I'm by my auntie's All house. All the things. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Shawty Law? I don't know. I know so many rap songs and don't know who rapped no, them. No, no. It's somebody Southern. You guys, you can It was definitely you know. given. Because he said yams. And then, <laughs> <laughs> On that night, At my guys. auntie's house. At my auntie. You don't know how black people say auntie and white people say auntie? That that was the, or aunt. Aunt. A lot of times I hear just aunt. aunt. They don't put the T on they it. They don't a lot of times. It was like, this is my aunt. Because I used to get made fun of that when I went to white school. Because they were like, why do you say aunt? Bitch, because it's a you. It's the one word we say properly. It's the one. Uh, we don't say ambulance. <laughs> Y'all don't say ambulamps. I don't say that either. But yeah, you know aunt. That is the correct pronunciation. They would like act like I was being haughty. It's like, like my aunt. My aunt. Oh. Yeah, that's my aunt. Like, I didn't add the vowel in there. It exists. It exists. Yeah, we're saying it right. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Guys, see, this is how you know. Now we're breaking down <laughs> the What do you aunt. guys, how do you guys feel? How are you guys feeling? You guys okay? Hopefully you guys Let are okay. Let us know. We care. People don't reach out. Not as much. As Not as need. much, but like, yeah, reach out. Reach to us, out. You guys. Hit us up, you guys. Reach Definitely out. reach out. You guys can always find us anywhere on social media at the Fat Podcast. If you guys have some ideas for us, topics and stuff like that, um, send us, shoot us an email. You can really DM us on um, Instagram, but also if you um, hit us up on Gmail, the Fat Podcast at gmail.com. Also, if you haven't already, you're nuts. You need to sign up for our Patreon. We have bonus content. Lots of the time, it's the shenanigans before and after show. And YouTube. You and should see. YouTube, we try so hard to be presentable. I have on makeup. It right is now. not easy, okay? I usually look like a slave. I know Beyonce said I woke up like this. You don't want to know how no, I woke up. No, she didn't. I mean, she was probably she still probably lovely. Was, yeah, she, just, didn't woke, she didn't woke up. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't wake she up didn't like, woke up like that. that. Not like that. Not like this. Not like on the cover when she was on that, like, 
clear horse. Fuck out of here. <laughs> that was a lot of airbrushing, sis. Let's be for real. I mean, but also, you look But lovely. yeah, you look great. I want that I'm too, saying, actually. We try, so reward our effort. I try so very hard <laughs> to keep our love alive. And but you, you don't want to meet me half the way. And the understanding, guys, there's no way that we can work it out if we don't pull together. I don't mean to be demanding, but I want some understanding. I want to be with you. What I need from you is it's Patreon dollars so we can produce can... this show. Make you hear what HD. we know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. This is going too far. You guys, we're out of here. Um, see you next time. Peace. Before we go, we must give thanks Thank to you. Urban Nerd for providing our music. And legal services were handled by Trazen A.M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake ass book club. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the fake ass book club. We out.